Rolo Tomasi, one of the self-proclaimed godfathers of the manosphere, author of three books, including The Rational Male and The Rational Male Religion. Now, I've addressed the red pill community quite a few times on this channel, and when I had my friend Hafiz from The Roommates on, it rubbed Rolo the wrong way, meaning he made a two-hour response video to our conversation, and in it, he said he would only have a conversation with me if I read his book. So I did. And then my friend Adam Sauce from Valuetainment Money finally got the two of us in the same room to discuss this contention topic of male and female dynamics and relationship. In this video, you'll see how one of the figureheads of the red pill community comes out about his religious beliefs and how they're in contradiction with the red pill community. Bruce Lawn. Uh, something me and Rolo agree on that I didn't know we would agree on, we both believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Rolo says that he is a Christian. He is also a follower of Christ. That's how he described himself. Mm -hmm. And that he believes in the divinity and physical resurrection of Jesus, who is the Christ as per the Abrahamic telling. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I read the book. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I you. I read the whole yeah. book. And well, I, want, I wanted I mean, to honor you in, the, in that way. because well, let, me, said, let me explain something really quickly to you. Like when you and I had our exchange mm -hmm. on Twitter, mm -hmm. I'm, thank you for, for doing me the courtesy, doing me the solid of reading that you're reading the book, because that right there saves a lot of time. Yeah. So when people tell me, oh, just give me the, the elevator pitch of the red pill, give me mm -hmm. the elevator pitch of what you're talking about. It's like, it's impossible to do that sure. because there is so, it's so comprehensive. So it's easier for me, like people criticize me for like linking old essays when they ask me questions. They like, just read this essay, I already covered this. And they get really pissed off at me for doing that because they want something like a sound bite. They want some sort of little mm -hmm. info bite. Uh, when I saw your reaction to my conversation with Hafiz, mm -hmm. It was framed as if I was the ideologue, religious guy with no care for empir empirical evidence or data, mm -hmm. um, which is just not true. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to kind of get into is that, one, we both believe in magical thinking, mm -hmm. per your definition. We both believe in a risen man who I, died and physically I rose from the grave. I acknowledge the idea that magical thinking is both a positive yes. and a negative. Yes. Okay. So, so we yes. agree that it's a positive. Mm -hmm. We agree. For, in, for those of us that mm -hmm. aren't clear on this, magical thinking. It's, well, it's, 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 it's the way he frames religion in the book. We agree on a lot. What we disagree on is marriage, mm -hmm. that you can't endorse marriage. Not now. And I think that if we look at what is the optimal environment to bring children into this environment, mm -hmm. into this world. If my buddy Sauce mm -hmm. wanted to have kids, uh, do you want kids? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. we, well, hopefully we could agree that the optimal environment mm -hmm. is to be in a nuclear family mm -hmm. where the man and the woman are in the household together. Socially enforced monogamy has been the bedrock of Western society 100%. for a long time. So we agree on that. However, mm -hmm. the red pill speaks very low of marriage. You guys have a very, uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. a very skewed view mm -hmm. of marriage. If half of marriages end in divorce right now, at least in Western, uh, yeah. but statistically speaking, you got a 50-50 chance of having a quote-unquote successful <coughs> marriage, whatever that mm -hmm. is defined yeah. as, and then with that. So if the optimal environment is for kids, mm -hmm. Sauce wants kids, is to be married mm -hmm. in the same household. With a, with um, a husband and a wife. With a or, husband or and with a, wife. a man and a woman, what, however you define. Fine. Husband and a mm -hmm. wife is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 painting of marriage mm -hmm. is not helpful, in my opinion, based on what we know about marriage. Mm -hmm. So marriages you do ninety percent of the work. Mm -hmm. She puts in ten percent, and then uh, she could she could file divorce at any time, mm -hmm. and then you have to split all the proceeds. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you leave out there, Rolo. Mm -hmm. um, a whole lot. For starters, divorce highly correlated with income. Mm -hmm. The least, the less you make, the more likely you are to get divorced. Mm -hmm. This is a fact. I got sources, mm -hmm. and uh, it's commonly known that like one of the top two issues in divorce is money. or breakups is money. It's money. So, okay. and money. It's money. And mm -hmm. Dave yeah. Ramsey would say that uh, number one reason people get a divorce is money fights, money problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so one, we know that the more people make, the least likely they are to get divorced. That's that's a. In fact, with the regards about 250K, mm -hmm. you flatten out, I think, at about a 25% rate. So one, that's that's mm -hmm. omitted from the fact. And then the, the, the response goes, well, alimony. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the average man, median income for the average man, mm -hmm. take away the bottom and the top outliers, is about 60,000 a year, mm -hmm. okay? People aren't paying alimony on those types of salaries. So the mm -hmm. average person is most optimally to thrive. And I can give you all the statistics about how being single, you're highly to be depression, uh, de all these unhealthy, mm -hmm. lazy, all these different mm -hmm. things. The optimal environment for a man is to be in a marriage, mm -hmm. 
Okay. So for the, kids, you mean for, it, for kids for its mental health. And okay. again, and I got the studies. We could look at the mm-hmm. studies if you want to look at the studies. Mm-hmm. Suicide rate, depression, unhealth, all kinds of different things. Mm-hmm. Di- hard to, it's mm-hmm. awful if you're a man in your 40s. Mm-hmm. So the Red Pill is framing marriage as this caricature mm-hmm. that maybe on the contractual side, there are outliers mm-hmm. where, women, where women take advantage of men. Mm-hmm. But the average case is that if you know how to make money, mm-hmm. if you understand some of the game side of things. I would mm-hmm. say there's some utility. And I think what you guys do a good job is you, is you stir people away from some type of women that are, in my opinion, selection biased. Mm-hmm. Sauce, you got married before. Right? Briefly, yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, what did you do to protect yourself in that marriage? Oh, I had a prenup. He had a prenup, mm-hmm. right? Dave Ramsey recommends prenups for anybody that's independently wealthy before they go into yeah, marriage. Yeah, I Dave had Ramsey money, is a financial goal. Correct. You got a prenup. Yeah. And, and I protected you. Yes. Correct? I got buddies that have covenantal marriages per your book. Got a couple buddies. They got married. They kept the state out of it. Mm-hmm. They protected themselves, mm-hmm. right? And so on and so forth. So I think primarily this this character of marriage, man, is 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 I think very toxic. Mm-hmm. On top of which, you 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 go on to glorify how being a virgin is ideal in a marriage, mm-hmm. which is for the woman, for both people, we for could, the we man could, too. For the man, we could for correlate yes, body counts. You could hold you on. Could. What? You could. We yes, could start the show, We could gentlemen. correlate body counts. I'm gonna. That's we where could, I'm gonna start weighing here, gentlemen. <clears throat> we could correlate body counts to yeah. less happiness in a sex life. The, the higher, more partners you have, the less likely you are to be happy in a marriage sexually. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's hmm. proven. I think you if you don't know what you're book. missing, you if ignorance is bliss. Hundred percent. So and on top of wow. and this is the part I'm, I'm probably most bummed about, and mm-hmm. and you identify as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. somebody. I'm bummed, Rolo, that you left out all the statistics about how unlikely you are to get divorced if you are a person of faith who mm-hmm. practices their faith. Now, I know you're going to say that's the mm-hmm. no true Scotsman argument. It's mm-hmm. not. If you believe in earning wealth, you're going to do certain things to practice earning wealth. If you believe mm-hmm. the Lakers are the best basketball team, you're going to wear a jersey and go to a game occasionally. If you profess to be a Catholic or a Christian, you do things that show that and that mm-hmm. you go to church you pray, you do certain things. So when we factor all of these different variables together, the divorce rate plummets way, way, way off the ground. And that's the part roller that I'm like, man, this is such a caricature of marriage that I was really bummed out that you as a Christian mm-hmm. didn't put any of this in there with the caveat. And I appreciated you putting a virgin thing in there because mm-hmm. I thought that was fair of you. Mm-hmm. And that's the part where I go, man, if the optimal environment for our buddy sauce is to one day get married to have kids, okay. why would we not tell him that? Why would we keep this information with, mm-hmm. from him? Why would we omit this? Is that your goal to do that? That's first and foremost is like, what do you want as a man right now? Because right now we're, we're in the 21st century. We're 21 years into well, 21 and a half years into the 21st century. Okay. We're still clinging to old order ideals. We're still clinging to a 20th century, actually probably like an 18th century ideal when it comes to monogamy. We are not looking at it from a post-sexual revolution. And I'm saying for better or worse. I'm not saying this is, okay, I don't deal in shoulds, I deal in is. Okay? Uh, but, but you do though, because you prescribe very yeah. specific things in your book, The Rational Man. We understand. can get into I that understand. later. I understand But that. you do prescribe okay. I things, Rolo. I make a point to be as object, I know it's impossible to be entirely right. objective. Right, you, but you I, believe in objective truth. I, they have but an you obligation prescri- to it. But you mm-hmm. prescribe certain things. I don't things. prescribe anything. I don't prescribe. Okay, okay. We, we can so, come back to that. So let me uh, let me explain let, something. Let him let, yeah, let him get say, this let, out. Let me and explain. Then we'll, let me explain we'll a couple things here. Dialogue. I'm not in the business of making men better men. I'm in the business of giving men the tools that they need to make better choices to become better men themselves. Let me just That's understand what you, what you just said right there, and then I'll let you continue. It's it's almost like cause and effect. You said I'm not here to help men be mm-hmm. better i'm here to give them the education the to be better well mm-hmm. it's the same the thing, tomato tomato mm-hmm. rollo you were prescribing no, certain there's, a, there's a big difference so, okay. I'll, tell, the I'll, difference. Explain go, to go, you. I'll explain to you why okay i do not have a step-by-step program that says follow this template and you will have a great neither, i have nothing neither like do that. i neither i'm not sauce, i'm, neither I'm not PVD. saying that you, i'm not saying that you do i'm okay. saying that that's my approach mm-hmm. when i write any book when i do any show when i write any essay it's not about here's what you should do here's what is happening what are you going to do with this information okay it's like fire okay I, uh, you can use fire to you know heat your home and cook your food or you can use fire to burn your neighbor's house down and you can go and set your your neighbors on fire as well when i am talking about marriage and I, you're not the first person to throw this at me is that they say well rollo how can you be red pill because you're married or how can you be married because you're red pill right and so I'm always stuck in the be- in the middle of all of that because I have a, a great, by all estimates, I have a fantastic ideal marriage for most guys would say it's an ideal marriage for 26 years. Um, I have a kid, right? 
So when, when especially from the traditional conservative side of things, they come at me when they say, well, how can you be so down on marriage? I'm not mm-hmm. down on marriage. In fact, I make that point in, in religion. I said, I'm not down on marriage. I'm down on how we do it now. I, I, but that's maybe, a sociological okay. phenomenon. Like that, that's, that's social culture mm-hmm. that's dysfunctional. Yeah. Right? That's so why I, I, don't, made, I don't follow mm-hmm. culture, Rolo. Mm-hmm. I build culture. Do you, right? have a, do you, no, have no, a legal, me, do you have a legal contract between you and your wife? I do have a legal contract okay. between you and your wife. Then, you, then you, that's, okay. that's part of the culture. Yes, that's a part of the culture because we chose to be that. I can get mm-hmm. into why that is if you want me to. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about people just brainlessly following culture, mm-hmm. right? Like, I get it. That sounds like everyone's plugged into the matrix and acting like an idiot. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. The issue is that most people who want to be successful at anything aren't going to follow culture, okay? If I come to you and I say, Adam, man, I want to double my income this year. Mm-hmm. You're going to give me a bunch of countercultural examples of how to do that, correct? Countercultural? Don't go out and party every night. Don't, gotcha. don't play video games. Don't take on student don't loan debt. Student don't just loan do the debt. typical nine to five. All the of whole that thing. is yeah. co- countercultural. The very fact that you're an influencer disqualifies any of that. The very fact that you're on, that you make, do you make more money as a rapper or do you make more money as an influencer right now? Right now as a YouTuber. Then you're following culture. Okay, but, but even I'm as a rapper, culture. you are. No, 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 so, no but, but I'm explain building that. Why is that? Well, I'm saying that the, our idea of what it is that we want to do, our passions in life, everything is like, I, I, I rail against social co- uh, constructionism. I get that mm-hmm. part of it, right? But the very fact that we're even on this show with all these cameras around mm-hmm. us, or, P, or Patrick's over here doing this. Are you saying that this, he'd be more counterculture well, if he said, if he I was, don't do social if he was media? counterculture, he'd be in a punk band. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> I, said, I said the things that it requires to be successful at anything is countercultural, mm-hmm. Rolo. And so as a person that's created, I have to make countercultural decisions to be not the average. But you have to work to within that culture. I do have to. I do have to do that. But mm-hmm. let me give you an example. You mentioned something in your book about Christians jacking mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. right? And you talked about uh, uh, what was the striper band and, and oh, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, right? it's it's, uh, it's the Christian kosher. Christian mm-hmm. kosher. I like mm-hmm. that. I like that a lot. But you made this one really example, and I think this kind of kind of speaks to this. You reference J. R. R. Tolkien and mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings influencing mm-hmm. Dungeons and da- Dragons, mm-hmm. and then you also reference C. S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, which is sure. To you, a spinoff. J.R.R. Tolkien led C.S. Lewis to faith. Mm-hmm. J.R.R. Tolkien built, who's a Christian, mm-hmm. built Lord of the Rings and led culture that mm-hmm. then the world, Dungeons and Dragons, and non Christians followed. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think you miss how much I think is driven by art creativity mm-hmm. within modern music, within you know Lord of the Rings and mm-hmm. all these sorts of things. That your example was often that, like that, mm-hmm. like like that was led by a Christian who led C.S. Lewis, and he was building culture. And I'm saying there's mm-hmm. other examples of people doing that mm-hmm. all throughout history. But at, to be successful at anything, we have to be counter countercultural with our choices while we mm-hmm. engage culture to further our messages. But, but, Rook, I, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to skip That's over good, the marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll okay, explain. But, we, you've heard this before. I'm sure every. I, I forget. I think it was my, maybe it's Warren Buffett who said, you know, the most important decision you can make in your life is like who you're who going you're to marry. Yeah. You're going to parry. Talks about with, that all the time, right? So there are. It's not just about you and the woman. It's about the families you created, the families that come together on oh, either side. Yeah. It hinges on one thing: intersexual dynamics. It hinges okay. on being able to mm-hmm. come together and having that knowledgeable database. I'm not against marriage. I'm against marriage in the sense that it's like didn't know it was coming, didn't know the <clears> risks, <throat> didn't know mm-hmm. this, didn't know all the downstream effects Red that pill. could come from it. Because you have this romantic ideal in your head that oh, she's the one, and most guys live mm-hmm. in a state of sexual scarcity, yeah. so the first girl that, that gets off with him, suddenly she's the one you know, ordained from God to be his wife right. for her forever. Now, now this, do you think there's any selection bias, though, in the way you're describing some of these women in, in terms of the culture? If there's a bias, it's a post-sexual revolution bias for the last four generations but to for where s- we're at. For some women, not all women. In some effects, all women, and some effects, some women, okay? So... I made this point with Jedediah yesterday. Is like if you were born after say like 1960, You're right now you have had gynocentric feminist sure. ideals planted into your brain that you think are just like give it like given truths. You yeah, think mm-hmm. that they're they're self evident truths. Whereas if you were born in a generation prior to the sexual revolution, you it would be like you're like what are you what are you talking right, that's about? That's fair. You may prescribe marriage with with some reforms i appreciate you saying that well i did say that monogamy was the bedrock of western yeah, civilization and we agree on that. Abs- yeah, how yeah, that is formalized is really sure. kind of particular to the society the religion mm-hmm. the guys sure and so i i would take the stance that w- i want to tip the scales as much in sauce's favor as i possibly can okay. if he wants to get we're gonna married. get you married sauce I, think. Yeah, 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 I appreciate yeah. it i mean <laughs> no, 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 you're by my side he wants, like to have, he wants to have kids so That's now, all yeah. what i would call your prescriptions mm-hmm. i think are where it gets problematic and you probably know where i'm going you got you got you got spinning plates mm-hmm. right and then you have 
uh, don't wait for sex if this if she makes you wait for sex. Talked about it yesterday okay. with Jadonia. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so how how does that work in your mind mm-hmm. as someone that's prescribing a lot of non consensual dating? I mean, to the point, mm-hmm. Roller, where you go on and you tell people push out the girls that aren't going to let you smash for uh, weekdays and the ones that are going to give you intimacy smash you know hang out with them and I got the quote right here hang with mm-hmm. them on a is that a quote from the Bible that, that by is, no this is this oh, okay. is the, the Bible of Rolo <laughs> from the Bible <laughs> save, your, save, your, save your weekends for women who've been a had proven an interest in you mm-hmm. sexual mm-hmm. Uh, and, and relegate those who haven't to Tuesdays and Wednesdays, mm-hmm. and then you say, "Don't wait, don't ever wait for sex." If a woman makes you uh, wait for sex, I don't now, say now, that is not what that says. By the way, that, I don't say is, I, okay. It's the here's the here's the rule. Okay, Iron Rule of Tomasi number three is this: if it, if a woman makes you wait for sex, the sex is never worth the wait. Uh, you also say if you look at the end of that chapter, mm-hmm. I also make the the I, I put some caveats at the end of that where I'm saying like, look, if your religious convictions are such that you're like, I don't I don't believe in premarital sex because most guys who are reading this, most guys on planet earth right now Mm -hmm. they're not waiting to have sex most women are not waiting to have sex i am writing for an well not for but i'm writing Mm -hmm. in a time Mm -hmm. where that is the reality right now also it's not to say that everybody is like that there are guys who are going to wait for sex there are women who are going to wait for sex got it understood that's why i put the the caveat at the end of that saying like if this is your conviction Mm -hmm. this chapter this rule whatever is not about the sex part it is about Mm -hmm establishing genuine desire because that entire uh, rule is all about um, is this is this one really into me? Well, is she I, I like, I like genuine does she have, desire. Does she have mitigating that's that's what I want to know. Gentlemen, hold on. Do you believe in you should only have sex with one woman and wait till marriage? Yes. That's your belief? Yes. Ba- okay. and, and based on the empirical data, virgins okay. are happiest in marriage. People who wait to get married okay. are the happiest. People with the lowest body counts are the most fulfilled. So uh, what he believes in that you should have be I a virgin I, and wait till marriage? Here's, here's, I, okay. What's so your personal belief? Be- belief is this. Do I think yeah. that that's a best practice? I think it's it, it, it makes great sense. I think that is untenable in the 21st century. Hell, it's untenable in the 2020th century, which is why it is a rule. Hold on. You think it's un- untenable for people yes. to delay sexual gratification? Yes, absolutely. It based is. on what? Because men need sex and women need sex as well. And you can, you can't wait for six months or a year they, court. Okay, what do you mean six How months? Much, or a, a, year? a lot of the folks I know who are getting married in their early twenties, they date, they get married. We're talking about a twelve to eighteen month window. Mm-hmm. They're married. Mo- most of them are virgins. Mm-hmm. They go on, they build lives together. Kevin Samuels will call this an okay. IKEA marriage, mm-hmm. right? They build lives together, and then by the time they're thirties, they're mm-hmm. they're worth multiple six yes. figures. Right, Not, so ninety-eight percent of people on planet Earth don't wait for sex before marriage. Yeah, the seventy seventy percent of guys are overweight. Seventy percent of people are overweight. Sweet. Let's not eat like the seventy percent. Let's get shredded. Let's get our macros in check. So, you know, whatever. Eighty percent of guys make under sixty grand. Sauce. How do we fix that? How do we get guys paid? How do we get more money? How do we get those mm-hmm. skills up? That's where I'm landing. And I think that's where a lot of my 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 disagreement with the red pill has been. And I think you've clarified some things, mm-hmm. but I still think there's some cognitive dissonance here. And as a man, again, you've been married 26 years. That's mm-hmm. amazing, right? I would I would love to see you roll, and I mean this sincerely. As a as somebody that you claim to be a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. you claim to be you believe in the physical bodily resurrection of mm-hmm. Jesus. That's that's a miracle in of itself. I would love to see you preach more with you practice behind the scenes. I think that would be awesome, and uh, and that would be my heart for you. And I don't mean this in a derogatory way. I know, mean, I know. I mean, altar call time. It's yeah, fine. No, 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 I, it's, I, it's I get it. Altar call th- I, I, we all should be preaching what we practice mm-hmm. because it may not work for everyone. But goodness gracious, it could work for a lot of people and save a lot of people a lot of heartache. I would agree with you, but I would also say it's also very important to have the facts and have the empirical data and have the thing like where you want it, the full knowledge, yeah, and you we want the over, full education. We went over if you the empirical data. We went over yeah, when you're more that. likely to get divorced, there's less money. Yeah, exactly. Right? We talked no, about all of no, that. Okay, so here's what I would tell guys. You want, you want a prescription? Here's a, here's, Come on, here's a prescription. The prescription Uh-oh. is this. Let's go. Know what you're getting into. Like that's yeah. the, the Know what you're getting you know. into, and let's tip the scales in your favor. Our buddy Sauce is going to want kids. I want him optimally set up to have the best kids and the best family and the best wife and the best home Mm -hmm. so that he's happy. Mm -hmm. He's getting laid all the time. This is my heart for most people. So how do we tip those scales in your favor? You know all about money, man. You could teach me things about money. We talked about disability insurance. mm -hmm. You're giving me game on that, right? I'm saying that this is pragmatic, Rolo. I'm saying this is actually helpful and beneficial, Mm -hmm. and we should be telling people about this across the board regardless and saying, hey, man, you know what? You may not go to church. Church might be a good idea. You know, that might be a good idea for you to get in touch with that side. You might want to consider this whole gospel thing because it, it's done something for Rolo 26 mm-hmm. years later, happily married, daughter, mm-hmm. you know, thriving business, online platform, five books. Goodness gracious. Yes. Again, like I, I keep saying, I wish 
the be- I wish guys could have this. That's why I really feel so bad when I, I cannot endorse marriage I, in the way that is done right now. Can you endorse I wish marriage you could in the way I described it? Covenantially, yes. Okay. Contractually, no. Okay. Mm. Halfway, we met halfway? <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch the full debate, click over here. If you want to hear my conversation with Hafiz and some of my extended thoughts on the Red Pill community, you can watch that here. I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.